my first book in 1979, and so I thought, oh, 19, to 2019, it's going to be 40 years, which of course made me feel old, but <laughs> also kind of excited, and I decided I should try to have a retrospective. And so I've organized something for Kingston, and there's actually behind you the catalog. Do you, can you just give me one of these? Yeah. Well, I just need one. So I, 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 I found somebody to, a uh, young woman, to uh, curate an exhibition, and she came up with a thesis and has written a really nice essay. And uh, then a friend of mine offered to help fund the catalog, so I designed the catalog and have, have printed a bunch of copies. Um, but then I I had this chance encounter with Ho, and I also, um, at the University of Calgary, had a lot of my work, and I had just wrote to the um, head librarian and said, you might want to consider doing something, because it is 40 years that I've been making books. and So it all kind of came together, and. Um, I have a friend in Calgary who organized an exhibition at St. Mary's University, borrowed stuff from Calgary, the University of Calgary, the University of Calgary had an exhibition, and then they paid for me to go to Calgary, so then I took the bus from Calgary to Vancouver, which was quite a long trip, and I'm going back tomorrow. Uh, it was great seeing the mountains. Anyway, uh, that's how this uh, all came to be. So this, uh, each show is different, of course, but the in this one we have some um, older work, and then on the table, as Ho said, this is my newest, newest work. So when I, I started making books, the first ones that I made were felt, and um, I came across a call for entry from an exhibit, uh, from a gallery in Montreal called Powerhouse, and they, they said they were having an artist book show where people could enter, it was a jury show. And I was taken aback because I am living in North Bit of Sudbury at the time. Sorry. Nobody's make no artists are making books. I had no idea that was a thing. A thing. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Such a good word, thank you. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'm an artist, I'm making books, these must be artist books. And so I entered the exhibition and I got in and I got to see the show and I was really excited because there were all sorts of things that people were calling books. And so I, that spurred me on to, to do more and I wanted to learn more because uh, the, the books I were making, was making didn't have any words in them and I wasn't sure, I didn't know anything about printing. Um, at about the same time my dad said he'd like to fund me to do a master's degree and so I just had to find a university that I could do a master's degree and learn how to make books and paper. I also wanted to know how to make paper. So I ended up at Wayne State University in Detroit and lived in the ghetto there for a few years and um, it was very interesting and I learned a lot about making books. So some of these, this this one is letterpress printed and um, that is for, for maybe you don't know this, that's the little bits of lead type that you Okay. Take out of a drawer and you set, you make your sentences and then you run them through a printing press. So this was printed with silver ink on a black handmade paper. So in it, it's two poems by a friend of mine. Um, aside from the fact that it's black, hairy paper, it's a, it's fairly traditional. Um, but I soon realized that you could do other things with with making handmade paper, and so. I made my first um, book that I consider really, uh, well not personal, but coming from me, um, I made lake shaped paper, uh, I, I made a, a, a mold that was shaped like my leg and I made, a, I made paper pulp and put hair in it and um, so I had these lake, life-size lake-shaped hairy legs, <laughs> paper pages, and I rubbers. I I interviewed um, fellow students and women around me at the university and asked them, uh, did they shave their legs? If so, why? How did they? Maybe if they didn't shave, how did they remove it? And how did it make them feel? And I got 
some great stories, and I rubber stamped them on these on these legs, and uh, and that just got me going. And then I made I, I started I made my first questionnaire, which is how I got stories for several years. After that, I would think of a topic that I wanted to explore. I would come up with a lot of questions and mail them out to people I knew who would share them with their friends, and then I'd get all sorts of amazing stories from women. So. Um, uh, I did the, the only one of other one of that series that's here is, is uh, a lady always has beautiful shoes and a pretty hanky. But I did one called breasts, which was cast paper. Breath. I I I bought a bra and cut the cups out, and then had a friend make a mold, a plaster mold, and I cast paper in. So I had these bra breasts. Things and I rubber stamp the text on them. Raw breast things. Raw breast things. <laughs> and, and I had one called High Heels, where I did the same thing. I, I um, bought a, high, a very high heel sandal. I cut the straps off and glued my foot to the, to the soles, and, or both of them, and had a friend cast my feet in plaster and had like in two pieces, so I had molds and I could make these paper shoes and then the text was letterpress printed on handmade paper and slipped into the shoes and then they live in the shoe box. So um, after I uh, had my son, Matthias, uh, I started thinking about raising children. I could see how people treated girls and boys differently and thinking about that and I made questionnaires about that and got interesting stories. I, I focused on good girls because I, I was always told that I was a very good girl <laughs> but not everybody was and so I got great stories about that. So I did a number and tried to think of anything here's from the good girls. No, I guess not. But I moved on to thinking about good or women's roles and good wives and so the, this one, for instance, is uh, it's called uh, A Good Wife Wouldn't. And uh, you guys might have seen this one. I think it was probably in a show in North Bay. I have a friend who's married to a stubborn man. She asked him for a dishwasher because her hands were cracked and bleeding from the dishwater. He said it would be too hard on the septic system. She proved that it made no difference. He still said no. She went to her doctor. He gave her a prescription for a dishwasher, but her husband still said no. She tried rubber gloves, a uh, rubber and cotton gloves. This didn't help. Along came a second baby. His parents gave the money specifically to buy a dishwasher. Her husband still said no. Why doesn't she just buy the goddamn machine and have it delivered to the house? So that story was told to me on a camping trip, a canoe trip, and I was like, Oh, that's a great story. I've got to remember that. Um, it was actually about somebody in, who lived in North Bay. I don't know the woman. Except that her name was Pauline, and my mother's name was Pauline, and I, I felt the connection. But, um, it, it was a, a very good story. And um, so I did a lot of books about being a good girl, or a, uh, being, uh, I kind of branched into fairy tales. Um, and uh, then I was thinking about family stories, so there are some things that are, uh, I guess maybe this one is, is one. This is a, a drawing of my parents that I did, and I learned this technique, which is called the trihexaflexagon, and I thought, I need something with three, and I have two sisters, so I asked them to draw each draw a picture of our parents um, with pencil crayon. And so it's amazing how similar they are, except they, there are some differences. So this, you push in and you get a second image. So this is my second sister's. Now you see, in mine, um, my, my dad's got his back to my mother. He's, to, he's absorbed in his letter writing. And she looks very worried. Um, but in my sisters, they're actually, they're both smiling, they're standing, they're side by side, but he is still reading the um, Globe and Mail business section. <laughs> and then in my youngest sister's drawing, they're 
that it's, there's, it's more equitable. And so it's interesting how you know the three of us growing up in the same household yeah. had totally different yeah, yeah. world views on yeah. what was going on. We should try that. <laughs> um, so and uh, and oh, and I forgot about I, when my mom died in 1990. She left me a big pile of uh, well, she didn't leave it. Me, she just left. A big pile of Vogue and Harper's Bazaar magazines, and and there's so many bizarre images in them. And so, before I threw them out, I went through them all, picked up the really weird things, and saved them. And then eventually made um, quite a few books using using the magazine images. And this is a combination of images and text that I cut out of the magazines. And um, when I was pursuing the good girls themes, as I, I mentioned, I got interested in fairy tales, and so I actually did several um, pop-up books with fairy tales. So this, this, the other ones all have, as the text, things that I cut out from the magazines, and that, because they're common stories that you can follow along, you don't need the story to fold to you, but this one is Many Fur, which has incest in it, and so it isn't generally in, um, um, kids, you know, volumes of books for kids. So I actually did a, a I told the story the way it, it's a, it's a Grimm's fairy tale. And um, so that this is the mother dying and the young daughter and the, the father wants to take her as his wife so she runs away. So there she is running into the woods. She becomes somebody else, the servant of another king and he throws his boot at her, <laughs> part of the story. And, but then eventually they, they get together. So um, that was quite fun. I, I, I really like pop-ups. And I've taught as Madame Pop-Up for a long time in, in Ontario schools. And then um, I, I got breast cancer, and I uh, one of the doctors that I uh, saw, connected it to the fact that I'd grown up in Rouen, Miranda, and uh, Coppercliff, both of which have smelters, and uh, he had me tested for heavy metals and I had really high levels of mercury. And so I thought, well, if the environment has affected me health-wise, it must be affecting other people. So then I, I was lucky enough to be um, uh, an artist in residence at Queen's University for a semester, and I did a lot of research there. And I spent the next few years doing a whole series. So, Body Map and More Garbage come from that series. And um, then, um, and so in Body Map, like this is on my body is written uh, stuff about my personal health issues or, bo or body issues, and then in the um, background or the environment is information about environmental things that might or have affected me. And, uh, and this book is, is about garbage and how what we throw out uh, affects us and, and the book itself is made of garbage. So everything was left over things or ripped t-shirts and stuff that I was throwing out. And that's a, I kind of hated to give this up because even though it was melted, it, 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 it's my mom's. She she actually um, she, <laughs> she set herself on fire. She she was leaning against the stove to warm her bum in her pajamas and didn't realize that one of the burners was still really hot and her pajama shirt caught on fire. And but she had this on the kitchen floor and so she threw herself down and rolled in it. So it melted. The, uh, because the, the wharf is plastic, right? So it melted, um, but uh, but she didn't get burned. So anyway, I, I did for the sake of art, I gave it up because I actually really like the colors. And then um, I did uh, a series of books, none of which are here, called the Re Books, which were really large. The books are about this big, and they open up and. Each of them has three words playing, coming out of reduce, reuse, recycle. I, um, I made 
stories that were told in just three words, and the words are uh, scrap bits of t-shirt material that I, I made into tubes, and then kind of like um, the balloon animals, I formed them into letters and stitched them so that they held their position, so the words read uh, vertically. So it was, it was a great exhibition. It was a space about this big and uh, totally full of these hanging words. And, but that got me thinking more about re recycling, and so when I started this series, I decided to, as much as possible, just use material. I have so much fabric in my stash and my attic, and I'm getting older and I get use this up. So a lot of this is, is um, leftover material. And there are ten copies of each of these books, but I call them eccentric editions because they're not all identical. I have, um, I mean, each each one of these has some material that's sort of jacket-like, but it's not necessarily the specific material. And, and the buttons are definitely all different. I mean, this, I only had one of these that came from a, a friend in her 90s, and I thought it was so cool. So uh, a lot of it, as I say, is coming from my, my studio. I mean, and this uh, for this mending book, um, I asked people to donate uh, clothes that were holy or worn, and and uh, and then I, I, I patched or mend, mended them so to make them into the pages for the book. So uh, I was this this series started with um, Lorna Crozier, the poet, asking me if I had read a particular book of hers. She thought I'd like to play with the poems, which I took as an invitation to do so. so. So I started with uh, this book, poem of hers called Button, and then I did Zipper, and then I met uh, Terry Ann Carter, another Victoria poet actually, who was very excited about this book and wrote poems for me. This is a, a copy of a painting that I have in my living room, and she, she mentions it in, if you haven't read it yet. And, um, in a house on Stephen Street, in a room colored cobalt blue with an abstract painting the size of a door hung sideways, I unzipped the zipper book, watching layers of textile unfold like a waterfall, the tiny teeth of zippers gnawing on the poetry bone. So I made a second book with her suite of poems. And she also introduced me to Hazel Hall, who's the poet who um, wrote the poems in these two books. And she was a seamstress who uh, lived in the early, I, in the early uh, 20th century in Portland, Oregon. And she was handicapped and didn't get out of her house. And she took in sewing to make money. And she wrote poetry. And a lot of it is about sewing. So I had sort of started. Because I was, I was thinking I was doing a Lorna Crozier series, but it's morphed into the sewing poems. And I, I still have lots of poems that I want to work with. And I'm just, uh, this is the, what I have got so far. So I don't have the very first book I made here because uh, I'm not actually sure where it is. Um, I know that one of the very early ones a friend in Toronto has, and she says she's been looking in her basement, but she is a hoarder and has something like 40 bins, you know, those um, rubber made bins full of things, and <laughs> she hasn't found it yet. But uh, anyway, I do have the, the most recent book that I made, so it's um, spanning a good number of the years. I guess I think I missed. I didn't. I didn't speak about this. This is also one of the environmental series. It's called Toxic Kids. A friend um, in Detroit found these. Well, these are photocopies, but she found little paper doll clothes that um, some little girl made, and I think maybe the nineteen. 40s, I'm just guessing from the um, the style, and a few of them were uh, they had some printed matter on the back, and so just from the, the you know what it said in the advertisements, I, I was just kind of guessing. So I there was no doll, so I designed this paper doll uh, based on the Dion quintuplets. Yes. 
because they <laughs> did because I was living in North Bay at the time, and so they're big there, and and uh, and there were young quintuple paper dolls. So, and the text. So I I didn't I didn't want to write on any of the real ones, so I made my own and to write the text. And the text is all about toxins in our environment that harm children. Oh yeah, that's the, okay. There's another one from the environment series, Breast Cancer Journal. So this is. These are um, watercolors that I, I did while I was going through my breast cancer treatment. And, uh, oh, light and flaky. Oh, this, was my, this was actually one of, the, one of the early books that I made. Um, the handmade paper is made with tea towels and aprons and household linens. And um, then the, the text my mother wrote, and it is, it's called Light and Flaky. Portrait of the Artist's Mother, a cookbook. And um, here's my mom when she was six, the bow in her hair. And so she wrote the text in little dribs and drabs in letters, and then I edited it and put it together. And it's about her life as it revolves around food. And so then I asked her for specific recipes and, and, uh, and pictures. And so I... Uh, I put that together, and I did 190 of them, and that's what really made me sick. But anyway, that's <laughs> the book. The bookmaking class was in a. It was part of the printmaking department, and the the head of the printmaking department didn't really want to have anything to do with it, and so it was in a basement storage room with no ventilation. So we were using these toxic inks and solvents in this room with no ventilation. So I got quite sick. But anyway, um, it, it's led me to other things. I, I've had to kind of... At one point I couldn't even use white glue, or I, I did a lot of rubber stamping, and then the rubber stamping made me too sick, and so I've always had to be changing how I approach the work and the materials that I use in, in order to not have them make me sick. So, um, are there any questions? Sorry, you've just come in and kind of missed <laughs> some, some of the story, yes. So, how many books have you made so far? I don't know. There are a lot. Um, I know that they said they had 75 of them at the University of Calgary, but they don't have all of them, so I, I've probably made... I should go and count, but I, I, I don't think it would be unreasonable to say 200. Uh, and, and some of them are unique, but a lot of them are in editions of ten or yeah, hundred. So, or, yeah, because you make ten of each they're these, all different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, that's true. They are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because there's a yeah. amazing. Your website is amazing. Like there's a there's a lot in lots there. in yeah, there yeah. that no. um, not available. Some some yeah, of them yeah. may not. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that piece? Like oh, the, I forgot that one. Yes, this one is called. Um, Diffuse axonal injury. Um, my son, who's 32 now, when he was 21 years old, had um, a bad car accident and he had a, a catastrophic brain injury. And the diagnosis was diffuse axonal injury. And so I made this. Um, so you have the brain. And these are the, the healthy connections and then the green ones are the, are the ones that are kaput. And I needed some, I wanted some way, I was, I was afraid that the, um, the knot of thread would tear through the, the paper so I, I cut these little plastic discs and then I realized that they had just, so, like he had a whole lot of, um, uh, 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 those? no, the uh, uh, tip, uh, Stitches? No, uh, <laughs> it's like charades, sorry. Yeah, kind of electro, uh, not electrocardiogram. This is part of his treatment, he had stuff stuck to him. Well, to, to, to measure his brain activity, mm -hmm. they, they put electrodes on electrodes. his head. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and, so and, it looked like that. And so they actually, yeah, they yeah. kind of looked like this. So uh, it, was, it was unintentional, but then very appropriate. That was just when they were diagnosed. Yes, that was when he was yeah soon after the injury. But he had then he had you know he was in the hospital for five months, so he had some to see if things had improved. Right. Or, 
whatever. So this, uh, this isn't a question, it's a statement, but in the 80s, you also did a series of rocks that I remember. Yeah, but they're not books, so I... Oh, are they not? No. Oh. Okay. Well, anyway, they're fabulous. Yeah, thanks. They're, they're paper casts of, of rocks yeah. from the yeah. uh, Canadian Shield. Yeah. And they're gorgeous. Um, they're, yeah, they're quite large. Right. But you're not going to talk about that enough. Well, there's no, I'm talking about their books. <laughs> but, but why aren't they books? <laughs> uh, I never thought of them as books. They yeah. were single sculptural objects. I have no text. I, I admit that some of the, I have made a number of things that people might look at them and think, is that a book? But, well, like that. that. Well, like that, yeah. So. I mean, there's no text in this, but it does, you know, it has open. It, it, it has a cover, it opens. Yeah. So that's your next project, yeah. is to find the book. Oh, well. <laughs> in I'll all leave its that. varieties. I'll leave that for someone else. I just like making them. I, I accidentally pulled one of the green ones. I'll, I'll get that later. Do you have a favorite book of um, that you make? I think my favorite is, is not here. Uh, it's called Girls I Have Known. When my father died at the age of 87, um, he left a little brown envelope with Girls I Have Known written on it, and there were a whole lot of black and white photos of women. And <laughs> Wow. He wow. didn't get married till he was almost 50, so he had had a lot of girlfriends. And some of them had a little, like, on the back of one was written a girl from Munich who wanted to marry me. And I, it's my handwriting. I remembered him telling me how I, my father was German. He came to Canada in 1929. He became a citizen in 35, and then the war happened. So he didn't see his family for a long time. And he went back after the war, and he was obviously prosperous, well-fed, and this woman wanted to marry him, right. so he would take her away. You know? <laughs> and uh, and then there was another one. Was, it was a girl from Quebec who wanted to marry me. So <laughs> maybe it was his wishful thinking, but. Um, anyway, I, I thought it was quite intriguing when I found yeah. it. I said to my sisters, yeah. oh, this is mine. Yeah, really. <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping this. Yeah. So um, eventually it turned into a, a book. It's a flag book, um, which I, I don't have any examples of here. But you have an accordion, and then you have pages that are glued onto one side. So they kind of fly off the accordion like this. So what is coming off are... Uh, handmade paper dresses because what I did was I, I went to the library to look for a book about 20th century fashion to see if I could kind of date these photos from what the women were wearing and I got so intrigued with the great clothes that I ended up making these handmade paper dresses and then I incorporated uh, the woman's photo into part of the dress and so you have a series of dresses going from the 1920s to the 1950s. The last one is my mother in her wedding dress. And there are three pages that are just the outline of a, a man's suit. And that's where the text is. And the, it's a very funny story. Um, is it still available? Is it, I, I, you... don't, I don't think I have any left. It's one of a kind. Yeah, no, there were, I think, 10 or 12, but, um, and that's, that's, I think, the one I like the best. So the, as my second favorite is called Ghost Costumes, and it is a really large uh, piece. Oh, oh, here. This, this, it's two parts. This is Ghost Costumes Kurt, which is um, clothes that my father wore. They're all work garments, <laughs> because he was so focused on work. And there's no text, it's just photos. This is actually him up at the top of a, a pole. I he was an electrician, so up at the top of the pole um, during his apprenticeship in Germany. And then later he built uh, substations for hydro, and, and uh, so that's what a lot of these are. And, and then those costumes, Pauline, I have a detail, it's just a detail here, but uh, it, it is eight garments that 
are reproductions of ones that my mother wore. They're sheer fabric, and the text is hanging from uh, the hanger, the bar of the hanger, inside the garment. So you have to read the text through the the outer um, clothing, and it's it's all it's very it's text that I took from her diaries, and she left 43 volumes of Whoa. diaries after she died. And uh, I couldn't read a lot of it she wrote in her own private shorthand, but the bits I could were quite interesting. And so it's text about things she wished she, things she wanted to do and things she wished she had done. And it contrasts really nicely with the no text, but the things that my dad did do. Because he actually paid, he was so proud of what he did, he paid professional photographers to come in and document his work, just like an artist. And um, so we have a whole lot of photos of, of um, transformers. And, and transform, but they, these are transformers, and that's why I, I chose, uh, my press symbol is tra as transformer press. And I, I actually, with his permission, took his business logo to be my press symbol. Mm. So those are my two favorites. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Yes. Else? Which ones um, was the most difficult book that you had come across to make, and which one was the easiest one that you think um, was easy uh, to make? This one was quite difficult. I, I had a little paper model, and it was it worked just fine. And then when I started to actually um, try to oh, I'm sorry, I mean buttons. No, no, that no, well, that wasn't. That was not as, as difficult. No, it was this one. When I when I started to actually make it, then I realized that you know that it had to. The paper model, of course, was flat, and and I didn't have to think about the thickness of the the material. And I, I did learn when I was in school always to make a, a book dummy as a maquette, but I I, use, I just wing it now. I I don't. I, live, I like to live dangerously. So I already had the fabric cut, and then I realized, oh yeah, it's not look exactly going to fit, and I had to jimmy around and figure out, because there's got, to, you know, there, there are bits that are thicker here to, in order to accommodate the thickness of the thing. So that, that's, that was a challenge, um, which I enjoyed. And uh, easy. Mm. Actually, I think needle is pretty easy. It's not a, it's not a difficult um, structure and it just that for those of you who haven't read it yet, it's that the poem uh, starts with talking about sewing needles but then gets into drug or vaccinations and then drugs and and uh, so the, the poem, poem itself lent itself to easily figuring out what, you know, what objects I could use that, and I made it look like a needle book, so that was, that's not too difficult. I think we could turn it off now. <laughs> Actually, I have a, oh, another yeah. question, one more question, sorry. <laughs> um, no, I find, I have to make a comment first, I find that your, um, the zipper book and the button books are really amazing, like the way that unfold how uh -huh. it's how you read into the poems yeah yeah and uh, the constructions and everything you know um, but my, my question is actually about um, the form and the content of your work like which come first or do you have you ever thought of uh, um, how they work together generally the text comes first and then I try to think of a form that will uh, augment the text and just add more to it and make it a visual object that's interesting by itself even if you don't read the text it still you know can attract your attention and think oh this is interesting just by itself um sometimes uh like for this one it was the fact that i learned this cool structure that made me want to do something and so then i sought out the other drawings so that I had the three uh, 
so occasion and, and here even, I mean, I started, I work in a store where one of the things that we sell is um, um, Halloween stuff. And so we had plastic molds for making jello, a jello brain for a Halloween party. And one day, they didn't all sell, we had a sale table and I'm walking by and it was like light bulb. I could put paper pulp in that. And yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I bought them and there's a heart too, which I will use at some point. Because Lorna Crozier actually has a heart poem and a brain poem. Um, so in that case, I started with the actual, the mold and then thought about, I, I've, I've made two brain books about Matthias and it. But, but just following up on that, it's interesting because you, you were saying that earlier that it, some of them don't have words, but I guess I wasn't thinking that your books were just about uh, different material holding words, because some of your stuff was about the materials yes. and, and what yes. went in them might be visual or yeah. otherwise, right, yeah. like that one yeah. there. So obviously you had a fascination with materials I've always had into a, a story. Fascinated, yeah. So to that extent, it must have been somewhat yes. perform yeah. that started it. Yes. And then, and now, any excuse, you'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> like any words that come along, you'll all do it. <laughs> right? Right? So. That's true. But yeah, I, I have always been interested in fabric and paper yeah. and texture. Yeah. And I, I've always, even as a child, I made things. Come on. Um, I made things all the time. Yeah. Sorry, oh, hello. Right. That's okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm de definitely interested in materials. Yeah.